Yeah, I mean, we've picked, we've picked the fish factory just because it's got a, um, it's run by this guy called Antonio and it's a really, it's just feel, it sort of started off as his sort of project really, like in his, in his empty warehouse in Dollars Hill and he slowly built up lots of, uh, a lot of like, vintage gear and stuff like that, but it's a really sort of homely kind of space, but I think that's why we picked it really, just because it's a really nice environment to be in for two weeks, you know, if you can be there every day, it's really, it doesn't feel like a commercial studio so much, it's not really, uh, it's not really that slick and pro and stuff, he's just kind of making coffee and hanging out. We did actually produce the last one on our own. We worked, the only one that's, I guess, not produced by us is the second one, which is produced by this guy called John Lecky. And I think it, you, at that point, I think none of us were that into production so much, you know. Like the first one was pretty much just some acoustic tracks and kind of working with these, the, the engineer at the, the studio, this guy Sonny, and I guess he had quite a lot of input into the production of it really, I mean we just kind of let him do his thing. And the second one we still we didn't know that much about how to record and the recording process and um, actually producing things, you know. So I guess it, it felt good to be in safe hands in terms of working with producer and someone who knows about and you trust about that kind of thing. But I guess by this last one we were a lot more into electronic music and stuff but also into the production of it and wanting to take kind of a bit of creative control over that and use use that, you know, that process more, get more out of it. And that's why we kind of did it on our own. I guess the next one will be done by us as well. It probably will be along the same sort of lines as, as, as this last record. The departure, I think, was stemmed from things that we, we want to follow. So yeah, we're going to follow them, but I don't think it's going to sound exactly like the, the last record. And actually, even every track has like a different methodology, different process in it. Like the first one, we wrote basically busking on the South Bank, and we had, you know, we wrote that over the course of a couple of years. Um, and it was really fun writing that. And the second one, a lot more pressure. We actually went into a studio and like just had arguments for about three months. <laughs> and, <came> out <laughs> and then the third one, um, yeah, we had to find a whole new way of working because Nick left, so. Me, Milo and Duncan wrote, the, I suppose, the bulk of stuff of the trio, and that's where the electronics came in as well. But in each track, I think, you know, you have a process for each track which changes at least a bit between tracks, which gives the song a certain identity. Now, there's a song on um, the album called Rubidium, which is much longer and expensive and came out of a lot of these ambient jams we were doing. Um, which was the genesis for a lot of the, the sounds that we that we had on the album. Yeah, so you know, each one's got its own own way of being composed, I think, which makes them individual. It'd be pretty tricky to busk with what we use right now. Unless yeah. we took like a sort of about eight generators and a couple of like trucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think no, I, lo I I think we all love busking, you know. Like I I look back, I think we all look back on it with sort of fond memories. But I think I think I speak for everyone that we're probably happy to keep them as fond memories rather than like a lifeline. <laughs> but you never know. Maybe we'll, maybe I'm, we'll be back. I'm going out. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. There you go. Next week, me and Pete. Nice. Me and Pete. Well, he's 
Yeah, my sacks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair There's a tunnel by London Fields, which has got a really nice acoustic fan. Is it? <laughs> so you go, go busking, yeah. I stand corrected. Exclusive, guys. Yeah, I'm you there. You heard it there first. <laughs> you need a bass player? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Oh, oh, I'll come down. No. <laughs> I'll come down with the drums. Yeah. Okay, we're going busking next week. <laughs> yeah. In a tunnel near London Fields. So, come find us. Soon you rise above Your tower to a steeple stay Oh, come I guess it definitely shaped the first album in terms of what Jack was saying, we wrote most of it there and if you're playing for, you know, if you're going on a Saturday and you start at you know, midday or one or something and then you stay till seven, you're playing for six hours and it's not often, I mean, sure you're not playing like constantly but like a lot of the time you'd probably be playing like five hours worth or like six hours worth in total and playing the same things like over and over again and Definitely, um, you know, you learn things about what kind of stops people or like, or just getting tight, like playing songs over and over, you, you learn how to play them and you kind of learn to play through them and learn to play them together as well because we, we you know, we know you've really met each other at that point. So it was definitely really useful at the time, for sure. No, it's a tough one. I don't really think about it, it that much. I think if you start to think in things in terms of how you're going to get paid, then probably the art can suffer, I think. Um, especially if you're like, you know, I want to make money out of this and I want this to be like commercially successful. When you get stuck in that touring cycle of like touring all the time, I think it's frustrating not being able to write music a lot of the time. Yeah. And I think, especially for us, because a lot, a lot of it was always written together or you need, I don't know, you need equipment like you want, or your electronic, you know, all your stuff set up. It's funny, your job is to play music, but then you don't have any time to make music, so kind of, that can be frustrating, definitely. Um, but yeah, you have to just sort of navigate through it, I suppose. times when you know playing live is just that like, it's really inspiring but yeah if you're doing like show after show for like a month or something just non-stop no, no gaps yeah it can it can start to feel a little bit sort of like it's not soulless but like you know you feel like you're not really at the root of necessarily why you're doing it sometimes but then sometimes people you know just completely overturn that and react so strongly that you just know exactly why you did it. And, you know, I think each show sort of bounces off differently from the, from the next. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's just as long as you're not touring all year long, you're on a good thing, do you know what I mean? As long as you've got time to do what you do and live your life alongside it.
Give up again for Cornelia. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you. There she is.